Hi, and welcome again to CV Biology. Today, we're going to break the law of dominance. In our last lesson, we talked about how scientific knowledge is always expanding and being modified as we learn new things. And that's true with the case of Mendel's laws. Mendel wrote his laws of inheritance more than 150 years ago, and they did a good job describing pea plants, which for the most part have two forms of each trait. But we've also learned since then that a lot of traits in nature don't follow that pattern of inheritance. And so today we're going to talk about patterns that don't quite fit the model of dominance. For our first example of non-Mendelian inheritance, let's take a look at roses. If we mate this red rose with this white rose, what we get is all pink. That's right, all pink. And the reason behind this is actually quite simple. The red roses have two copies of a gene for red pigment. And the white roses have two copies of a mutation that makes no pigment at all. What the offspring get is a copy of each, one allele for red and one allele for white. And the reason that they have pink is they only produce about half the amount of pigment as this red parent, because the red parent has two copies of the gene instead of one. They make about twice the amount of red and thus show up darker. And this pattern of inheritance has been called incomplete dominance because neither allele is completely dominant over the other. The offspring are sort of an in-between phenotype. And interestingly, this pattern of inheritance kind of reminds us of an old hypothesis about genetics called blending. This was a very popular hypothesis in Mendel's day that didn't quite work out, but incomplete dominance kind of resembles that. By the way, if you Google the meaning of all these different flower colors, you'll get all sorts of answers about love and respect and fidelity. And so it can get kind of confusing. If you're looking for a gift idea for Valentine's Day, my advice, buy chocolate. Another deviation from the dominance model is called codominance. And this is where two different alleles each control a trait separately. In this camellia flower, for example, there is a gene for red and a gene for white. But if you notice, the gene for red is being expressed by some of the cells and the gene for white is being expressed by other cells, resulting in a sort of patchy appearance. And this is different from incomplete dominance. Let's explain how. In codominance, each allele separately expresses a trait. And so you get this sort of double phenotype. But in incomplete dominance, those two would merge together, making a single phenotype that is sort of in between the two parents. Multiple alleles shouldn't need an explanation, but we'll give one anyway. It simply means that there are more than two versions of a gene. And a common example is the ABO blood group in humans. As you can see here, there are not two, but three versions of this gene. And even though there's three versions, you still only inherit two because you have two parents. So let's look at some genotypes. If you get big I A, big I A, or big I A, little I, you would get blood group A. A similar pair of genotypes codes for blood group B. If you got the two dominant alleles, big I A and big I B, you would have both markers on your surface. And what is that? Well, that's codominance, which we just talked about in the previous slide. If you get the homozygous recessive genotype, you end up with blood group O, which has no markers on its surface. Did you know that when the paper for ABO blood groups was first published, that the writer originally put a zero instead of an O in the paper? but it got misread, and from that point on, everyone started calling it blood type O. But for those of you with blood type O, don't feel too bad. Your blood is the most sought after when it comes to donations. Another example of multiple alleles comes from cats, where fur color is coded for by four different genes, one of which is dominant to all the rest, and one of which is recessive to all the rest. What genetics can't explain is why cats are all over the internet. I mean, all over, seriously. The last example of where the law of dominance doesn't fit is polygenic inheritance, which means many genes control one trait. And a common example here is skin tone. Skin tone is coded for by multiple different genes, including ones like MC1R and SLC24A5. Why can't scientists name these genes something cool like Bahamatan? The more dominant alleles you have, the darker your skin tone. and each of these genes shows incomplete dominance, which increases the amount of variation even more. I think I'm like over here. 
Polygenic inheritance makes things more complex. After all, we could figure out exactly what this pea plant's genes are, but you couldn't exactly tell what this person's genes are. This kind of variation that works on a spectrum is called continuous variation. Of course, if you don't like your genes, you can always just fake tan like the celebrities do. If you think about most human traits, they're very complex, and that's because they follow patterns like polygenic inheritance and multiple alleles, and thus create more variation. It's a good thing Mendel chose pea plants instead of humans. And finally, you may have noticed a few times that we haven't used the normal upper and lowercase letters that typically symbolize dominant and recessive alleles. And that's because, well, we've looked at patterns that don't really follow the law of dominance. And so geneticists have different ways of symbolizing alleles. Let's sort of look at an example with fruit flies. These two guys on the top have normal looking wings and we call that wild type. And the symbol for wild type is a plus sign. And this is the way we would write the genotype for these. In this case, we would just call this homozygous dominant. These guys down here have, well, these itty bitty little wings, which are called vestigial wings, which actually don't function as wings. What do you call a fruit fly that can't fly? A banana. The symbol for vestigial wings is the letters VG, and we would write this like this, two VGs with a slash mark between them. If we mated these fruit flies, they would end up creating heterozygous offspring, and the symbol for that would simply be plus VG. Well, that does it for today. Thanks for breaking the law of dominance with us. And remember, if you want the interactive version of this video with practice quiz questions, just click on the link in the description below.